It's episode 526 of the Locked On Texas Rangers podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Patrick. Today is part two of my talk with Grant Schiller about all kinds of stuff with the Rangers farm system, where they were and how much better they are with these trades. All that and more coming up on this episode of Locked On Rangers. Let's get into it. You are Locked On Rangers, your daily Texas Rangers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. But Macaulay is another one, like, I don't know. I didn't see that much from him. There obviously wasn't that much. He played in 24 games and um, had like a 694, I think, if I'm doing my math right, OPS in those 24 games. And it felt really it, lazy, all the confidence I saw. Like, oh, he's a small white kid who plays middle infield. Dustin Pedroy. And I'm like, okay. Well, is there is there an accuracy to that from, from what you've heard about him? Or is it just kind of like, I don't know, let's just throw a random comparison on there. I don't know. I can't confirm or deny it. I don't know enough about him. Um, he's another guy who I saw, I think, for two at-bats at TCU – but again, it was against advanced college arms, which he wasn't ready to face. Um, however, he had a he had a good butt, good baseball butt, which is a yeah. good thing you want to see. He looked like a good athlete, <coughs> and he looked like he has a chance at a, a very good chance of sticking in short. Um, yeah, that's what I'd read. I mean, he played he played some he played like one or two games at third and then like six or seven or something like that at second base. But most of his games were at shortstop and it, yeah. from what I'd read, it seems like he's going to stick there, which is good. And he needs that. Yeah. So I, I liked him. Um, I don't have a huge scouting report on him. I can't say that he's Dustin Pedroia or not, but uh, I think he's a good, good prospect. He was their third rounder last year. Yep. Early, early returns are they may have had a pretty good draft, even though I have some uh, some doubts on Zavala, who is higher up your list, or Zavala. I don't know how it's pronounced. I think it's Zavala. Zavala. Zavale. <laughs> yeah, he was he was an overslot guy. Um, I'm not sure if Mahler was the was the fourth round pick. I'm not sure he might have been overslot as well. Um, but I know Kali was at a million dollars in the third round pick. Um, but yeah, these guys are. These guys, besides like besides Bradford, all these guys are real like just huge variance guys. Mm-hmm. Which you know, as you move up the list, and as I'm looking at where I have other people on my list, there's not a whole lot more of those guys on this list. I think there's one more I have at like twenty, and then twenty five. There's a guy who's kind of I don't know, big question mark. But everybody else, actually. Well, of course, you have like the the really young shortstops that are obviously somewhere near the top, and Acuna and Acosta. I didn't leave those guys off. Spoiler alert: they're, <laughs> they're up there somewhere. Wow, you're really giving <laughs> it all away right here. Yeah, I really, I'm really giving the whole thing away. But like, other than like literally those two guys, and I think one more guy, everyone else is pretty like. Well, maybe there's a couple, but like for the pretty much for the most part, it's all pretty like high floor guys, which is. God, it's just such a staggering difference to it's see. It's so different. Yeah. How much, like, in, I mean, if, if five years, like, it feels like a long time. Even, like, four years ago, even, like, well, towards, like, I'd say, like, 2016, about. Like, I don't know. Mazzara might have just, just left, but he was still a pretty high, like, floor guy, which turns out it wasn't as high as we thought. But, like, it was filled with, like, Louis Brinson's and Jorge Alfaro's and Joey Gallo's and Ronald Guzman's. All guys are like, wow, if things break really right for these guys, then, like, wow, it's going to be crazy. But also things could break really wrong, and they could not make it past double A. Now, granted, all of them did, but, yeah. you know, their success, it's still, I love it. But it's still so wild to me that Joey was the one that worked out the most of all of those guys. It's still kind of crazy because he was, I don't know. Brinson, would you say Brinson? No, because Brinson had the center field, like, speed power. Right. So I, I'd say his floor was thought to be a little higher than Joey's. I would agree with that. But Joey, the one with the, well, if Brinson worked out, maybe his ceiling would have been higher. Maybe maybe Alfaro's would have been. 
if if either of them hit like their 90th percentile. But I think Alfaro always had the lowest floor, and Brinson probably had the highest floor. That's fair. That's fair. I don't I don't know. Well, Joe, I feel like Joey might have had well just being like the third baseman and like I yeah, know, but we'll he was in. just always That's the true. guy who could he was always athletic and always. He could register the game better than Alfaro could, which that's is not true. what you want from a catcher. No, no, it's kind of, kind of difficult. Al- Alfaro's a guy who, if the, if the league, you know, gets rid of the umpires, that's a guy who could really, I think, benefit there. If he could ever hit. If he could ever hit, gosh, that's another guy with a man. Just the the batting practice sessions those guys would put on is just insane. Uh huh. Gosh, well, the, I mean, the, the, those are like our first years out there. We got really spoiled. My God, we really did. I mean, you got Joey Gallo with with complete eighty five nine hundred grade power. You had Alfaro, who probably had seventy or eighty raw power. Brinson, who probably had at least like raw power. I I'd say did bordered on double plus if it wasn't quite there. And then Mazzara, which I I don't even know if I, I don't know what happened there. Still, like I still I, I'm never gonna know what happened. That's gonna bother me to the end of my days, of like what the hell happened there. Like, I, I would read a, like, 2,000-page book on, like, what the hell happened there. Maybe he still figures it out and ends up being a good, a decent major league player. I don't know. There's that potential. But, like, that's from the biggest question marks. But, I don't know. Of those guys, which one do you think is, is the dumbest for being where they are? And um, you can even include some of those um, some of those other guys that I that I put on there. Um. Like who? Where's what's your dumbest ranking there? Yeah, of, of the ten we talked about, I, yeah. I I guess I understand them all. I guess I would probably say Krim not top thirty, maybe Bradford too low, but I think they're all within reason. Mm-hmm. I, I think I think my favorite of the players we talked about would be uh, it, it's probably Bradford. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there is one. I'm looking at it now, and I'm immediately rethinking what I did, and I'm like. Should I switch? I probably should have switched Bradford, and this guy is going to come out next week's. Um, but, <coughs> Cole Regans? Um, no comment. No comment. <laughs> <laughs> this episode is brought to you by Bilt Bar. It's the new year, and that means New Year's resolutions. If yours is about getting fit or eating healthier, make sure to make Bilt Bar a part of your plan. Bilt Bar is the protein bar that tastes like a candy bar, maybe even better than a candy bar. Bilt Bar makes it so easy to stick to your New Year's resolutions. You know, it tastes so good, you'll want to eat it, unlike some of those other protein bars that can be chalky or waxy or even taste like a chemical spill. Chemical spills are not good for you, and they don't taste very good, um, according to several people on the internet who said that they tasted chemical spills. They did not get special powers, but Bilt Bar will give you special powers by being healthy and being good for you. Covered in 100% real chocolate, most of those Bilt Bars that contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein, which, you know, compare that to a candy bar who has, you know, so many more calories, 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, dozens of net carbs, and, you know, not that much protein. So, there's so many different flavors to choose from. Coconut almond, peanut butter, brownie, raspberry, cookies and cream, salted caramel, mint brownie, and many, many four. In fact, Built Bar is always coming out with new flavors all the time, so check out their website at built.com to see what's new. Our listen go to built.com, use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. I feel like it's, I mean, it still bothers me that there's not, like, I look at all these guys on the top 30, and there's, like, I don't know, like, maybe four, maybe four of them that I'm, like, even like the like 80th percentile is like all-star like there's just not that many guys three you'd say three yeah yeah honestly you're probably right well crap All right. no i'd say four i feel good about my okay. four um but like still i know it's frustrating to not have that and like that's what you really got to get with your with the top three pick, they're going to get this, like in this upcoming mm-hmm. draft. And I mean, I don't know how good they're going to be this year, but I don't think they're going to get. A, I'm hoping they don't get a top five pick. I'm hoping they're a little better than that. Um, yeah, they, they don't have to be 500, and you'll get like a 15th pick. But like, I don't know. You really need to to nail the Jack Leiter pick. You really need to hope Josh Young hits 
all of the things that you think he can hit, and I, I think he will. Um, and you really need Wynn to be a, a number three. You really need to be at least, like, it really needs to nail down exactly that yeah. projection. So Yeah. Because they've done such a bad job of doing that in the past. But, I mean, there are some other guys who could be, like, threes in here. Uh, there's a couple of them that I think I mean, things break right. Like, mm-hmm. they could be threes. They're but, just a long ways off. There's a long ways off, and there's a lot of a lot of like fours and fives in here, and while that's great, and you need those, you also need the bigger guys, and I mean, I would like to see what they can do in terms of that and and making that kind of a thing happen, but um, I don't know. Is is the crim? Am I gonna really feel stupid about that Blaine Crim thing? Because I, I feel like I mean, that's the probably one. not. Because again, he's a 24 year old first baseman, but. Mm-hmm. Still top thirty, I'd have him in there. Gosh, there's always there's always one. Part. Maybe I need to be, pull a full Jane Newberg and just go all the way to like sixty seven and literally just pull guys out of my entire butt. Like I don't know, this guy is on a on a roster. Just screw it, he's he's uh, fifty seven. And you know, <coughs> the thing with this farm is, even while we're rightfully bemoaning the lack of like impact talent at the top, it is so deep. Because like when I was doing mine for fun, there was 37 guys who I went into it like, I want to put this guy in the top 30. Like, I really like this guy. Um, So you, you can't fit everybody in there. Grim's just one of the seven that was left over for you. Mm-hmm. Um, Now, can I throw in a couple more um, uh, honorable mentions who I believe are not on your, your list anywhere? Yeah. Yes, go ahead and and throw them in there um and if if they are on there then i won't say anything because okay i've already given away that i have you know guys who are in the top 10 of everywhere on my list it's kind of crazy that i Uh (laughs) (laughs) i'm going let's say um i'll start with your guy chase lee from alabama Mm -hmm. uh relief prospect i pretty much tossed him straight to double a last year it was their seventh round pick yep and he uh i mean he Eight up double A. 17 innings, he had 27 strikeouts and three walks straight out of college. Wait, uh, wait he, he's a sinker baller, isn't he? He Well, he's like a sidearm submarine guy. Okay. Still, that's impressive. Yeah. Yeah. He, he ate up the league. Um, that's, I think I looked at those numbers and I kind of forgot about him. I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I included any just straight up relief guys. On here, but there are some good relievers in the system that are worth noting. Mark Church is another. He, uh, yeah. Mark Church, he's probably going to be the guy who flies up the system next year. He made a lot of noise in spring training, and then when he went to Down East, twenty-seven point one innings, eight walks, forty-nine strikeouts. Oh, so that's nice. Yeah, I think he'll fly up the system next year. He'll be next year's version of the other reliever. Who I'll point out in uh, Nick Snyder. Yes, I I felt bad not including it, but I'm like I'm doing a whole no relievers thing, so I can't show. That. <coughs> Even I think he would have been a good obsession, exception because that dude he, he is. Have. I mean that guy. Pretty good. I mean he only he was like what six ish innings at the big league level this year. Three point two before he got hurt. Three point two. Okay, yeah, and then he got hurt. And I, I'm a sucker for a reliever in glasses. I don't know what it is, but eventually you <laughs> uh-huh. give me a reliever who's already like, a, a, I seems it seems like in very limited, you know, interviews and stuff that he already seems like kind of a weirdo, um, which you know. But you want to have a reliever. But I mean, even for a reliever, a guy who is a here's a weirdo for a reliever wears glasses, throws a hundred, hell yes, all in. And the last one I'll throw out there, so the Mike Miner trade, uh, Dustin Harris had a breakout year this year. I think he went, like, fifth overall for Baseball America in the top ten. Yeah, he was in the top ten. I su- I was surprised how well he – how high he was in there. I don't – I'm not going to give – he is he is in my rankings. I didn't uh-huh. leave him off. But yeah. the other piece of that trade, Marcus Smith, I think would have had a breakout year as well if he had stayed healthy. Hmm. Um, I did not have him – I didn't right, know right, and there, like. and there wouldn't be a reason to have him top thirty because he was hurt all year. Mm-hmm. Um, but the reports out of spring training were really positive, and then he went uh, to down east to start the year. And three games, in, he tore his hamstring and he never came back. Um, 
but I, he's a really good athlete, and it sounds like he had put some stuff together at the plate. So I think if he had stayed healthy, he would be top 30 without a breakout year two. Um, hopefully that carries over to next year. That would be the other honorable mention I'd throw in there that you had not mentioned. This episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online would like to wish you a very happy new betting year as we continue the march to the playoffs and beyond. Bet Online remains the number one spot for all the best sports wagering action in 2022. A new year and a new updated desktop and mobile website to sign up today. Proceed for a 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Just use our promo code LOCKED ON to get started. From football, basketball, hockey, boxing, and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games, don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for 2022. Bet Online is the fastest and easiest way to wager on all your favorite sports. Bet Online. Where the game starts. Yeah. I, I'm, one more. I don't think you had Mason Englert in your top 30. That's another no, name to follow. No, I didn't. Another, another. I, I had some thoughts about him. I I just didn't know what to do with him. I'm like, I like the numbers. I like the profile. It's just, I I don't know. I didn't feel like I had enough data. Good old D-load. Yeah. Good old, the ba- bad old, <laughs> bad old D-load. Ugh, gosh. Freaking... What did, what I feel like he did really well this year. What were what were some of the things that, that he did this year? He did do well. So he he did get eighty innings in with Down East. Um four thirty five ERA, three seventy three FIP in those eighty innings, twenty six walks, ninety strikeouts. Solid. Yeah. I, I think I think he's one one to watch for sure. Yeah, he's definitely he was definitely on my like keep tabs on list. He hadn't he he probably could have been in my my honorable mentions, but I don't know. I just I just forget, like I hear the name and I always like forget about him. Like he's always like in that kind of group uh-huh. of like the D load, just like right at the back, the back end of it. It's like, oh okay, yeah yeah yeah. He's still, he's still a guy. He's still doing stuff. Um, Speaking of arms, they drafted you got hurt. Do you have any idea what's going on with that UCLA arm, Ryan Garcia? Because I have not heard that name in forever, and he didn't throw this year. I have no idea what's going on with him. Okay. I don't, I, I don't know that anybody does. I'm pretty sure nobody does. He might be in wages protection, protection or something. Right. Because he was supposed to be a pretty good arm coming out of college, and he has he got hurt, and he just seems to have disappeared. Maybe his arm fell off, or they misplaced it, and they're still looking Maybe. for it. Maybe. They're just switching him over to uh, lefty. It's a working theory. I won't say it's 100% accurate, but... You know, it could be a thing. ninety nine percent accurate. Ninety nine percent accurate. Any other uh, honorable mentions that you think I didn't mention? I feel like we'll have more to get into next week. Um, some guys, I know you have some some strong yeah. thoughts. I don't have. I, act, I actually have some. These are some guys who who really did some some good work this year. That I think during the year I kind of overlooked them, but now looking back, I was like, okay, these guys are worth worth a mention of the next five that are coming up, but. Any other guys you want to? If touch if on? you have Jason Morabell on your top twenty-five, then we don't need to talk about him. But you don't have to confirm or deny. If you don't have him, then just pretend I mentioned him as an honorable mention right now. Um, he is a person. He is who, indeed a person um, who I, who I plays like baseball. Mm-hmm. Technically, for the Rangers in some capacity, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. but that feels like as good a time as any to pull out the. Uh, random ranger time uh, if you don't have yours pulled up already i have one which you know it the more i look at them it's like less random but still pretty random and there's just some some things that i'm seeing this on his uh, his baseball reference page that just kind of make me like confused but i already like this guy and um he is a a long time ranger played actually 216 games, which I feel like is about the max you can put on him and actually still be a random ranger. Uh-huh. This, is, this is Julio Borbone. Borbone, yes. Still a random guy. So you th- you hear the name Julio Borbone, you know him. You're like, okay, this is a guy uh-huh. out of Latin America. No. He no, went to he Tennessee. Was drafted in the first round out of Tennessee. He and they gave him a big league deal right away. They did. They did. It was very confusing. Uh, he went to high school in De La Salle High School in Santo Domenico. Uh, Santo Domingo in the Dominican Republic. Um, just, I don't know why that's so wild. You just like never see that of like guys 
come from the Dominican to like play college ball. I don't think at least really rare out of like Latin America. Um, but he played for the Rangers from 2009 to 2011, took a break in 2012, came up for literally one game in 2013, his last game with the Rangers, but had a, a pretty half decent year. Um, his first year up as a 23 year old, 46 games. He had a 790 OPS. I didn't realize that they gave him a first round. Deal. I kind of forgot about this guy, but um, yeah, first round pick 35th overall in 2007 out of the university of Tennessee in Knoxville. He is now 35 like years old. Um, but after that, had two seasons with an OPS around 650. Played some pretty decent center field decent defense. And, um, you know, it was just fine. Really random, half decent part. And it's just so wild. He played 137 games in 2010. Like, yeah. I don't, like, I feel like he did not play that. Like, I knew he was a general part of those teams. But this is the guy who's, whose career Craig Gentry ended pretty much because Kitten Face came in and, and took that role after that. Bourbon's a great one to remember for like the uh, Sporkle Rangers opening day lineup squiz. Oh my gosh, did he make... It's a great pool. He was on multiple opening, opening day lineups. That is so wild. Was he there in... Two, I guess it was probably 2010 and I guess 2011? I think so, yeah. Hmm. That's so weird. Um, it still feels ran- just random enough to be a random. I agree. Game. He played agree. like one more game. That would have been it. No random. Yeah, I agree. I'm I'm gonna go with uh, Maximiliano, aka Max Ramirez. Okay. So he was a catcher. So this oh, is a little... that. Oh, that. I I was like, wait, Maximiliano. Like what? <laughs> <laughs> this this is a little bit before your time, I think. But this no, was. I, I know uh... the name though. Okay. I, okay. Just barely. I'm like I'm aware of it and. The ramifications of that invoking that name. So um. this is who the Rangers traded Kenny Lofton for in 07. So there was a time back then where there was concern about how you're going to fit all these catchers onto the big league roster because you had three: you had Salt the Machia, you had Taylor T. Garden, and you had Max Ramirez. So it's like, how is this going to work? There's three top catching prospects, um, and that <laughs> opening. Uh, but it was indeed a time and he had 140 plate appearances with the Rangers between 08 and 2010. So he has an AL championship ring. Never played anywhere else. Um, he slapped. Which honestly isn't that bad for a catcher, Mm -hmm. which makes it a little bit harder to, to live with. Yeah, um, of those catchers, um, you know, one of the other ones did did win a World Series. Old, yeah, old salty. Uh huh. Like twenty thirteen. Twenty thirteen. Yeah. Okay. This man had a twelve year big league career. Like I'm not making him my random ranger, but like he had a twelve year big league career. That's kind of insane to me for a guy who you know was thought of like oh this next big guy, and he actually did have a year where he had an OPS over eight hundred. He had an 804 OPS in actually, well, 2013. <coughs> 40 doubles and 14 home runs that year. Look at him go. Yeah, I mean, the crazy thing is, you would have thought that in 2010, when the Rangers kind of cast him off, and then he had the uh, the yips issues, just getting locked yeah. to the mound, that would have probably been about it, because he debuted in 07. This is four years later, and he hadn't lived up to the billing. Mm-hmm. And he has those issues, and then... 2011, he just turns it around and he sticks around for another seven, eight years. Mm-hmm. Um, Man made sixteen and a half million dollars. Yeah, that's so I mean, that's, got that's, a ring. Like all props to him. He made in 2007, 2008. So there's still more. Yeah. There. So, Wait, so like, he made 100k in 2018. That doesn't make sense. That's not. Well, he wasn't in the big leagues for long. Okay. He was there for five games. That's still. Um. But like all props for him to him for what he did after he left the Rangers, but that's, he did not work great. out here. That's great. I'm glad. I'm glad he had a. I mean, a 12 year career. No matter how it happens, like that's solid. Yeah. I, I would take 16 and a half million dollars right now. That would be nice. Even for a one year big league career, or a one day. Yeah, that that would work for me. That's a lot of a lot of pay for little work. That's what I'm going for here. <laughs> I mean. 
And you kind of have that flipped like in real life, though. Yeah, I, I might have a twelve-year podcasting career, maybe more than that. I don't think I'm going to make sixteen and a half million during it, unless something really changes, uh, and unless all of you in like on Earth just go and subscribe to this podcast on YouTube and go watch every video like a whole bunch of times. Which, like, if they all did that. I, that'd be a lot of pressure, um, and a lot of confused people on Earth who don't understand baseball. They're like, "Why am I watching this?" I felt oddly compelled to do so. Well, so your goal is a thousand by spring training. If you're trying to get to six and a half million, that might need to like might need to get million, to like a hundred thousand like by spring training. Twelve years. Twelve. Years. twelve years. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we'll we'll get. So there. we're just shooting for exponential growth, not like yeah, immediate. That's not that's linear. What we're we're okay. going for not linear. That's that's too much. I mean, that's okay. That's how it all goes. I mean, it's been kind of exponential down lately. So like, you know, <laughs> y'all hop on that that subscribing on YouTube. We're that goal for a thousand was ambitious. It's getting more ambitious by the day that, that y'all aren't helping me get on this. It's fine. Like I'll forgive you if you've already subscribed, but like, I don't know, go grab a fin, log into an old Gmail account that you didn't, you don't use anymore. That one still has a, a YouTube account. You can just go hit subscribe and then forget <laughs> that that account exists after you <coughs> go and subscribe. I mean, I have I believe, three different Gmail accounts that I've used on my own to go subscribe <laughs> to my show, but it still counts. It all counts the same. Um, Got to hit that, that thousand subs so I can start getting in that sweet, sweet YouTube money. Um, but I feel like that is that desperate plea for YouTube subscribers is a, a great way to end this podcast after our um, excellent selections for random rangers. Gosh, the Max Ramirez one that's a that's a solid pull. These are getting harder as we're, we're running through they are. good ones. Yes, um, eventually I'm gonna have to move past just ones that I actually know. Um, just like hey, remember. Remember Charlie Culberson? <laughs> it's gonna be a solid one in, a, in a, like three, four years. Hey, hey, do y'all? Do y'all um, remember uh, Nathaniel Lowe? Remember Brock Holt? That was a you know that? Uh, you know that Corey Seager guy? Oh God, that will never be a range. You signed a ten. <laughs> you signed a ten-year, three hundred twenty-five million dollar deal. You are you are no, no bit of random. If we get a. A Kyle Seeger on retirement to come play with them. That uh -huh. would be uh -huh. really random, but I feel like at this point, um, I don't know. Maybe his wife will release an update and say he's actually <laughs> Maybe. retiring. That's how, I wanna re that's how I want to retire in whatever industry I'm in at that point. It's you know, just have my wife put goal. it out on social media. Yeah, Have my wife tweet something out. <laughs> I, I hope Twitter doesn't exist in 30 years. It will. It, that health site will be there. It will evolve into something way different and weird and um, great. And, you know, maybe in 30 years, I'll still be doing this podcast. And maybe by then I'll hit a thousand subscribers, but that's going to do it for this edition of locked on Rangers. And until next time, don't forget to enjoy baseball. <laughs>